I love this idea, Dave. So let's have the fun part start. Uh, could you please demo the DBT integration where Scale interprets the DBT model and metrics and serves them and making those metrics available to all of the BI tools. Yeah, absolutely. So let, yeah, let's get to the fun part. Of, so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we can take uh, the Jaffle Shop metrics model from DBT, it's in DBT's GitHub repo, and we're gonna turn that that set of uh, code, uh, that's that, uh, that set of markup language into a real model and then serve it using the tools that people want to use, like Power BI, Excel, and Tableau. So let's go from a bunch of YAML in, in uh, GitHub's repo, uh, in, a GitHub, in, in DBT's GitHub repo, and let's go, let's turn that into real living data where users can actually explore it and ask questions about it. So let's go. Okay, so uh, what do we have here? So first we're starting with um, DBT Labs uh, Jaffle Shop metrics. This is their sample project for uh, their semantic models. Um, so uh, you can go right here. This is the GitHub um, our repo reference uh, that you can go and, and check it out for yourself. Um, so what you can see here is it's uh, we're talking about code, right? We're talking about uh, uh, a, a mixture of of YAML files uh, and SQL files, and so this is great for the developer. Um, and uh, you know, I encourage that you know you should have two interfaces, right? The developer should be able to write code. And then uh, a business analyst should be able to use a GUI. But we're going to turn this into uh, a, a visual model. Uh, so we're going to take, we're going to go from code and we're going to turn it into a visual model. So let's go ahead and let's go and uh, do just that. So uh, we're going to start with, I put together a little shell script. So we're going to be making a REST call uh, to uh, the at scale server. I'm just going to tail my little shell script here and show you that uh, there's two parts to this uh, to this uh, uh, this curl. Um, you can see the inbound resource is pointing to our uh, the Jaffle Shop uh, 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 GitHub repo, uh, so we're going to operate this on in the cloud. And then you can see the outbound resource is actually to at scale. So we're going to take we're going to take that that model and we're actually going to install it in at scale. And uh, what you can see down below in actions, you can see that we're actually going to orchestrate DBT core here. So we're going to run the DBT model that's required for this model, for this semantic model. And then we're going to load it into at scale. And then we're going to deploy it in at scale using uh, publish at scale in um, uh, action. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's uh, run that now. So I'm just going to go ahead and run it from uh, my terminal. And then I'm going to switch over uh, to my log here. It's already going, um, and what you can see here is that we're actually uh, we're actually reading and compiling that DBT semantic model. Uh, and then what you can see right now is that we're actually we're actually running DBT core here. So we're running the models, uh, which is persisting these tables with all their transformations into into Google BigQuery in this case. And you can see that's eleven steps. Uh, so uh, at scale server is doing all of this. So all I had to do is call that endpoint uh, and uh, at scale will figure out exactly what needs to happen uh, to make this model and turn it into something that's servable uh, to all these different these different BI tools. Uh, so just like that, we've actually converted it. We've actually deployed it in at scale. Uh, I'm now going to click our little handy uh, link there and we can go and check out what that model looks like. Uh, in AtScale Design Center. AtScale Design Center is our visual modeling environment. So what you can see here is you can see Jaffle Shop is now become an AtScale model and it's a visual model. So uh, you got the best of both worlds. You got your code, but then you got something that you can actually touch and feel um, and visually. Uh, you can see that uh, we have our dimensions and our measures. We have the concept of hierarchies, of course, because you want to do drill down. It's a fully multi-dimensional model now. It's not just flat data uh, sitting in tables anymore. We have the concept of relationships. We're relating those facts to those dimensions, which are shown there in green. We have hierarchies for dates so we can drill down. And that's all defined uh, in this uh, visual model. So now that we can see what that looks like, let's go and check it out 
um, by uh, and see what it looks like for a consumer. So I'm going to start uh, with uh, Tableau. Uh, and then I'm going to move over to Excel and to Power BI. So you get a real good flavor for how this semantic model and looks like in all these different tools. So let's log in. I'm using my own Active Directory credentials. So I'm logging as, as myself using my single sign-on into Tableau in this case. Um, I'm going to log in to the endpoint for AtScale. Uh, and what you see there is there it is. There's Jaffel Shop. And there's all my data in different folders, uh, all my metadata in different folders. We haven't imported data into Tableau. It's really important that this, this data that you see here is just metadata. So it's, it's, uh, we haven't done it as a, an extract. That would be cheating. We're going to operate on this data live. And I'm just going to go ahead and double click on order count. Let's look at food orders. Let's look at large orders. Let's make it a bar chart. Uh, that's no fun. Let's look at it by some dimensions, like by some dates. Let's start with the year level and look at my data by year. And let's drill down. This is what OLAP is about, right? So we're drilling down now on all these, uh, in all these, uh, um, on this data. So this is all running live queries against BigQuery. The data didn't move. The data stayed exactly where it landed. Um, and, and we're just uh, able to deal with it now. So, okay, so so far so good. Uh, well, let's move on and let's check out Excel. If you notice, I'm, I'm clicking on our copy button on the MDX endpoint. What does that mean? We're not do using an add-in here. Uh, a lot of tools will use add-ins to integrate with Excel and that's not the way Excel wants to work. Excel wants to work just like the built-in connector to analysis services. This is what Microsoft built Excel Live Pivot Tables for. So we are using MDX because that is what Excel wants to speak. And here we go. There's Jaffel Shop. You can see we're able to select it here and select it as a live pivot table report. And just like that, there's our metadata. So you saw our metadata in Tableau. Now you're seeing it in Excel. Um, and I didn't have to model data. We're not going to dump raw data in and then start to create a pivot table on the raw data in the sheet um, because that, you know, that would be creating data copies. That would be creating uh, a risk because that data is now sitting in that spreadsheet. So we're just going to go ahead and click on um, our orders, our food orders, our large orders. So you can see how that, that works in, uh, in Excel. Let's look at, there's that hierarchy. Uh, so I'll go ahead and look at that. Uh, you can see how fast my data comes back. I want to look at it in rows uh, so it's easier to work with. And now I'm going to start to drill down right here in the sheet. This is making live queries back to um, at scale, a semantic layer, which is making live queries to BigQuery. That's happening, happening in real time. So look what I can do here if I, I can convert this pivot table to formulas in Excel. Why can I do that? Because it's natively integrated with Excel. You can see how in the, to the, the function bar, formula bar, you can see that these cells are now cube value cells. That means that they're coordinates. And those coordinates can be moved anywhere you want in your workbook. And, what, and Excel will keep track of those because they're coordinates. And when my data, I want to refresh my data, I click refresh and it'll get the new data from the warehouse without any copy and pasting. These are live cells. Okay, so let's go and do the same thing um, and look and see how Power BI works. Well, we're not gonna create a Power BI import. We're actually gonna go ahead and use the built-in analysis services DAX connector. So we're connecting now to at scale with DAX. So you've seen, and we're not gonna connect with the import, we're connecting live. So you've seen, for example, you've seen Tableau speak SQL to the semantic layer. You've seen uh, Excel speak MDX. Now you're seeing Power BI speak DAX. Uh, that's what a good semantic layer has to do. It needs to be able to handle multiple dialects because it needs to integrate natively with your BI tool. So just like that, there's our same metadata. You can see in the right-hand corner there, lower corner, it's live connected. It's not direct query, which is slow. It's not an import, which creates data copies. It's live. And just like that, I can go ahead and create my visualization. 
I didn't do a I didn't do a stitch of data modeling here. Just like that, I have my live data just to show you that we didn't cheat. Look at the if I click on that data model tab and zoom out, you can see that Power BI inherited the data model from that at scale semantic layer. Guess what, everybody? That is Jaffle Shop's model in Power BI without having to do any kind of extra work. No remodeling, no importing, no copying, no jank. So just like that, I hope you got a, a, a really good view. But whoa, one more thing. How did that all happen? Well, you know what? The magic that happened, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull back the curtain for you here. And I'm going to go to our query logs. And just like that, what you can see is you can see we have all of our logs. These are all the queries I just ran for you in those three different tools. And you can see that uh, I can look at all the different dialects that were inbound. Um, of course, the outbound dialect was BigQuery. We translated R SQL to BigQuery SQL, MDX to BigQuery SQL, and DAX to BigQuery SQL. And we did all that automatically. And why is it so fast? Why was it 511 milliseconds to run that query? Because we built AGs automatically based on the user, user query patterns. So aggregate tables in BigQuery, no reason to do anything extra. Uh, that was all done automatically by the platform. No designer, no IT, no data engineering required. So just like that, you want to serve your, uh, your semantic models? The AtScale Semantic Hub can do that for you. You can write it in any language you want, and we'll serve it and make it work with any consumption tool you wish. Wow, Dave, this was amazing. It's like a dream coming true. Uh, at Skill is the intelligent semantic layer that talks all of the semantic languages, serving all semantic models in one hub and feeding the analytics meshes of the business units with the governance, but given the freedom to innovate with data. Amazing. So I think this brings us to our closing comment. Uh, the universal semantic layer welcomes all data and analytics personas, as you can see in this uh, in, on this slide. Yes, whether it's uh, code or no code. So whether you're a business analyst who wants to use a GUI, whether you're a software developer who wants to write code, uh, we have a, a, a we have a semantic modeling in, um, interface for you. Uh, that's going to allow multiple personas to work and create these semantic models and empower the business to work with business-friendly, user-friendly, governed semantic uh, objects so they can ask the questions they need to ask to do their business. With that, we would like to thank you all for joining us in this fun tech talk where we have the opportunity to expose our game-changing product innovations. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.